Every day, we are surrounded by millions of images. Images in fashion magazines, television, billboards and internet. These images form our perception of the world. On a closer look, you may notice these images advocate one standard for beauty. You have to be young, tall, fair, slim, man or a woman to be perceived as beautiful. In the year 2017, the average age of models seen across top 5 fashion magazine covers based on circulation is noted to be 28 years, while the age of consumers who can afford luxury items advertised in them is well above 35. Three quarters of the models featured in fashion magazines, campaigns and runways are of skinny to slim builds. There are 50 to 55% of the population of this country that is categorized as plus size. There are five brands in India that make adaptive clothing for a population of 5.4 million physically differently abled, and zero that make beauty products and accessories suited to be easily accessible to the differently abled consumers. While overseas, brands like Rihanna's Fenty Beauty have brought in a new wave of hope with 40 plus shades and foundations ranging from fair to deep dark. In India, majority of the beauty brands on an average offer only 11 shades, predominantly ranging from fair to medium. Dark skinned, differently abled models, models from the Northeast, models of non-binary genders and sexualities, models wearing hijab and models above the age of 50 are a rare occurrence on the covers, catwalks and campaigns. Fashion and beauty is not just about clothes and makeup. They are mediums that have been known to reflect the society, its beliefs, attitudes, ideas, choices and changes in an influential and powerful manner. But the present day fashion doesn't seem to reflect reality. There's a vast gap between the standards set for beauty and reality. And for decades, the fashion and beauty industry has been able to get by using a narrow definition of beauty. But why should we be bothered, is the question. Well, the myopic definition of beauty propagated by the images that we consume on a daily basis through magazines, campaigns and catwalks are causing a physical, emotional, as well as mental health crisis which can affect anyone, anywhere, anytime. We are constantly comparing ourselves to those visuals. It is noticed that our self-worth, how we feel about ourselves, is proportional to the perception of how good we think we look. And how good we think we look is a derivative of the ideal standard of beauty which is propagated through the images seen in magazines, commercials, on TV and internet and across the runway. When we constantly surround ourselves and compare ourselves to retouched and not relatable visuals, it is known to contribute to low self-esteem, self-loathing and body dysmorphic disorders. When the world we live in considers being young, tall, thin, fully abled man or woman as the ideal standard of beauty, it sows the seed for body shaming, bullying, ageism, colorism and exclusion. I'm too fat. Uh, I'm not tall enough. If only I was a couple of shades lighter. Every time we hear someone making self-loathing comments on me not being able to meet the beauty ideals or the simple inability to find clothing to meet their size or being robbed of their dream to enter the fashion industry because their look is not in fashion. It paints a grim picture. The question of inclusivity has become a primary issue 
in the present day fashion discourse worldwide. The concept of average consumer is changing. The consumers are wanting to embrace brands which feature models that look like themselves and stand for similar values. Currently, only 2% of the population fits into the cookie cutter mold idealized as the standard for beauty. But it is that 2% that drives the sales for the rest 98% who purchase products hoping to fit into the mold. The $27.8 billion cosmetic surgery industry in India is a testimony to that. Studies show that the demand in aesthetic surgery went up substantially between 2007 to 2017 because of increasing awareness and social pressure to look perfect. The survey also stated that 65% of the young adults felt that aesthetic cosmetic surgery would boost their confidence. The demands for being perfect body features and perfect skin tones topping the list. The need of PR is to commit to inclusivity and not just tokenism. Casting one or two northeastern or plus size models, magazines releasing an annual age or body issue featuring models ranging from different age groups or body sizes, or brands releasing a few shades of dark uh, or medium foundation tones, or a plus size capsule collection reflect only that what has been held to be a long-term belief that these groups can't push products, that these diverse groups cannot contribute to sales. But this is far from representing the real consumer. And do not, they do not reflect the emerging fashion markets worldwide. Another facet of the problem is selective inclusivity where models must tick majority of the boxes of ideal beauty criteria and one feature that meets the inclusivity quota. You can be plus size, but you have to be tall, fair, young. You can wear a hijab, but you can be slender, tall, fair and blue-eyed to be cast. It is not about who is represented anymore. It is also about whether rep the representation is organic. It is not only models and products, but also people working in the top echelon of the fashion industry that need to reflect the inclusivity, for they are the ones who will set the ball in motion. With cultural, societal and economic changes, there is a shift in demographics, opening new markets and opportunities for the brands. In order to be relevant, brands should be able to cater to those who fall outside the cookie-cutter mold of beauty. Brands must abandon the myopic approach and see massive opportunity for revenue generation that these segments offer. The purchasing power of these diverse groups is undeniable, with brands like Aerie, Savage Fenty, retailing size-inclusive lingerie, and Fenty Beauty, Huda Beauty, retailing color-inclusive makeup, these have sold out at an instant. Dolce Gabbana took lead venturing into the $266 billion industry producing a collection of hijabs and abayas targeted to Muslim customers in the Middle East. And after years of being ignored, these individuals want to be loyal to brands which treat them like priority and not just an afterthought. It is time that we change for the better, for it is the only way forward. It is imperative that everyone feels represented and empowered through fashion. And the change comes from us, from you, me, everybody. It is 2018. And it is important now more than ever to stand up for what you believe in and make your voice count. Using this voice to demolish stereotypical definitions of beauty, embrace differences and create revolution.
starting a conversation on various platforms addressing the lack of inclusivity in the fashion industry is the first step to making our voices heard and create a mechanism of change. When a concerted effort is made to create awareness and, and understanding amongst all the stakeholders, only then can it have a long-lasting impact on the ones who consume and work in fashion. It is time that we grow conscious of what we are consuming and promoting. For companies make decisions based on consumer demand. Brands will put their money where the mouth is. If you really wish to see a change, we must celebrate inclusivity by investing in brands that are inclusive, by buying from them, promoting and, encourage, and encouraging them on various platforms, and calling out brands that blatantly ignore it. Once brands realize that this is leading to loss in business, they will follow suit. With the advent of social media, it has been, never been easier as now to record the responsive audience of the to product launches, campaigns, castings of shows. The intention is to be more inclusive of all intersections, be it through casting models or creating products that cater to different sizes, age, colors, sexualities, abilities, and non-binary genders. An industry that has been proud of leading changes, of being fashion forward, it is time we walk the talk. Our beauty lies in our differences and complexities, and nobody should be made to feel that their uniqueness is something to be ashamed of. Here is to celebrating beauty in all its forms, to leaving behind archaic, stereotypical standards of beauty and creating a more inclusive industry that celebrates diversity.